Com. You'll see I have a full house today, which always makes my heart so happy because we're here to talk about probably the most sacred week of the whole year, which is Holy Week. We've got with us Noah, Steve, and Ben with Pine Lake Church. And welcome, guys. Hey, Rebecca. It's good to have you in here. And full disclosure, I work out with these gentlemen every morning, too, so it's neat to see them all bathed and in normal clothes and, you know, uh, here in the studio. But this is exciting. So for Christians, this is the week. This is the week that without this week, nothing else would right. necessarily really matter. So, see, we're going to start with you. When you think of Holy Week, when someone says, ah, what's the significance of that entire week? How do you respond? I love that question because for me personally, it's everything. It's really my purpose for living. It's why I have hope. It's why I have a life because of what Christ Jesus did for us in his life, the way he loved us, the way he died upon the cross to pay the the price of our sins. And because he lives, he gives us hope. And uh, for me, that happened at 21 years old where I became a Christ follower in uh, my relationship with Christ. And so it's changed everything in my heart. And this was a big week, right, for Jesus when That's he right. was walking on, on uh, planet Earth. I mean, a lot of it went down. It was a heavy week for him. We're moving into Good Friday, which is really odd that it has the name Good Friday because it was a rough day for him. That's right. um, but this whole week has significance. So, Ben, when we think about Holy Week, when does it actually start? I mean, I know our weeks are Monday through or Sunday through Sunday or whatever, but when does Holy Week celebration actually begin? Yeah, so at the beginning of the week on um, Monday when Jesus would have come in uh, on a donkey into Jerusalem, I Ironically, to the same people that we would represent tomorrow uh, that would say crucify him, they were saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And so Monday, uh, Jesus is a hero as he's walking the streets or riding the streets on the back of a donkey uh, into the same people that would ultimately betray him later on. So that's Monday. Yeah. No, we're going down our Bible list. So <laughs> Tuesday, on. what would have been the next? Because the whole week is full of just very specific, and it may not be down to the day, but after that, there's significant sort of things without the week that happen or instances and events that lead us up to Good Friday and then ultimately Easter Sunday. So what else was going on this week? I guess, what, 2,000 years ago, Noah? Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, 2,000 years ago, something <laughs> like that. Um, so I'm not sure if there was anything specifically on Tuesday. Don't but I know, did he get a rest day? It, uh, I'm, I'm not <laughs> well, sure, to be honest. I don't well, know if to talk about that. See, yeah. I mean, <laughs> let me help you a little bit. Yeah, come on. I'm not sure about Tuesday. I can tell you about Friday. <laughs> no, I mean, he, he trial for entry on Sunday yeah. and then cleared the temple on Monday. Everybody knows that story from childhood. You know, we mm-hmm. cleared the temple. Then on Tuesday, he taught again in the temple and began to cause some tension because he began to, you know, hey, I am God. I'm the one that you're reading about in Isaiah. And so a lot of heat began to to be focused upon Christ Jesus. And, uh, you know, he he took all of that, you know, because of his love for us. And so on Tuesday um, in the temple teaching and then on Wednesday, kind of a silent Wednesday where we're not really sure what he did. But he um, we believe that he took time to step away to rest and to uh, to be with his disciples. That's right. Before Thursday, which all we you know we know it's the Last Supper and uh, the washing of the disciples' feet, which leads us up to Friday. You know, Good Friday tomorrow. You know, when they say it escalated quickly, it mm-hmm. escalated quickly that yeah. week, right? Like, but it was always coming, and you know, we all, he always knew that there was going to be the end. But yet, everyone who chose to follow uh, didn't necessarily understand it or, mm-hmm. or sort That's of right. grappled with it. You know, and as believers, if we put ourselves in their position, mm-hmm. two thousand plus whatever years mm-hmm. ago, it's always humbling to me to think because if you took the, the the greatest person in your life now, whether that's a parent or a sibling mm-hmm. or a mentor or something, and then think what they would be thinking to know that at the end of the week that they were going to be watch them be you know crucified and lost what that would feel like because we get the benefit of knowing how the story ends Mm -hmm. in this way and so sometimes making it personal can really put it in into perspective so for steve you know you've been a believer for probably longer than some of us here have been been a (laughs) bit of a thanks a lot i got kind of tossed that one kind of tossed that was in terms of noah but um and the rest of us he's the baby in the in the group. That's fine, though. Um, how do you keep it, the significance of it? And I think to us listening um, who have been through the motions of Easter every mm-hmm. year, right? Like, how do you keep it special? How do you keep the significance of it um, relevant mm-hmm. so you remember? And so it's not just going through the motions. That's a, that's a great question, because even this week, trying to prepare for services this weekend, we tried to make it real personal. Don't let this become work or just something you prepare for uh, for a lot of people. What does it mean to you personally? And for me, Rebecca, when I was 21 at Southern Miss Junior, when I became a Christ follower, uh, my life was a wreck. You'd look outwardly, and I had lots of friends, good grades, 
We'll see more of the mascot at Southern Miss for football and basketball in a fraternity. Outwardly, everything was perfect. But when I would go into my dorm, a bond hall, fourth floor, just broken. No hope, no joy, no assurance of where my life would would be spent eternally. And so when I became a Christ follower, I learned real quickly that there was a void in my heart that only Christ could fill. And so when I turned from my sins and placed my faith and trust in Christ alone as my Savior, it brought a, a peace to my life, a hope to my life, a meaning to my life, a purpose that I'd never had before. And it's almost like anxiety and worry and things I couldn't control it didn't matter anymore because Christ brought me peace. So now years later, like you emphasize, a lot of years later, 20, 23, 24 years, really, I've been a Christ follower. My life has not been perfect. When I make mistakes, and I do, man, there's a grace that I have from Christ. And I'm learning, and I've learned that this is not about being religious. It's not about being you know, good. It's about having a relationship with Christ. That's what keeps it special is that it's truly a relationship that I've learned Christ gave his life for me to take part of. And so it's, it is very personal. It's not just a bunch of people or dressing up for Easter. It's about celebrating the one who gave his life that I could have life. Sure. You know, no, I was picking on you the fact you are the youngest in the bunch um, <laughs> yes. in this room. Um, but you're also, in terms of your maturity and following Christ, your leaps and bounds, and probably some of us in this room around uh, your age. And mm-hmm. it's refreshing to sort of see. And I think that it's also a reminder to us that there is a generation coming behind us. We were the generation coming behind our grandparents. And so at your age, in the sort of state where we are right now, in terms of just uh, everyone feeling hopeless or a lot feeling hopeless, what does Easter represent to you and maybe your generation? Well, I, I think that's a really good question, Rebecca, because for the longest time growing up, Easter was just about, I don't know, Easter eggs and candy and all kinds of stuff that it was. It never really meant anything important to me until I was older and I understood what Jesus going up on the cross and dying for me really meant. Because a lot similar to Steve, I really didn't start following Jesus until I was in college. So I lived a majority of my life kind of living through the motions of I went to church on Sundays and Wednesday nights, and I I did these things that made me, quote-unquote, you know, a good Christian. But I wasn't actually following what Jesus has called me to do, which is to go and make disciples of all nations. And I wasn't doing those things. And so when I got to college and realized, man, there's people my age in their 19, 20, 21 that are really sold out and following the Lord, that was when I realized, wow, like— what Jesus did on the cross really means something to younger people, because I thought for the longest time, man, that's just for people Steve's age or for Ben's age or whoever. That's just older people. I'll get there when I get there. But when I was in my 20s and realized there's people right here right now that are changing the world in their early 20s, I realized, man, that's something I want to be a part of. And so now when I see Easter, especially at a church like Pine Lake, where we're a pretty young church, I mean, we've got a lot of older folks, got some younger folks, but we've got a lot of people in the middle. I think, man, now's not the time to wait Now's not the time to be, you know, in your 20s and still living a life that glorifies yourself. Now is the time to move forward and to step into what God is calling you to do. And I think Easter is the perfect time to do that because Easter is a celebration of what Jesus did when he went on on that cross, died for us so that we don't have to live in that turmoil that Steve was talking about that he lived with Mm -hmm. his entire college life. And so I know a lot of people that are my age, they're just thinking, man, down the road, I'll follow Jesus then when I'm 30 and I have kids and I'm married. But now's the time to start following the Lord. And so if you can come join us, Pine Lake, on Easter, Mm -hmm. you'll be able to hear more about that story and what has changed my life, too, at such a young age. You bring up a good point. Uh, Pine Lake on Easter, you guys have multiple campuses throughout the state, Mm -hmm. um, and it's probably times. So, uh, Ben, do you know, uh, I know your locations and then the times for the Easter service? Yeah, absolutely. So we've got uh, five physical locations and certainly church online now in this current world that we're living in, uh, and services on Saturday and and on Sunday, uh, all of our campuses will have um, at least one service on Saturday and th- at least three on Sunday. But I can give you the rundown. In Clinton, on Saturday, uh, it'll be a 6.30 p.m. start. On Sunday, it'll be 8, 9.30, and 11. In Madison, it's a uh, 6.30 p.m. Saturday, Saturday service. And on Sunday, same thing, 8, 9.30, and 11. Same is true in Oxford up in North Mississippi, 6.30 p.m. on Saturday, Sunday, 8, 9.30, and 11. The same is true with Startville. And then at the Reservoir, we do something a little different. We will have a 3.30 and a 5 p.m. service on Saturday, 8, 9.30, and 11, and then a 10.15 option, all with live teaching and live worship in all of them. And you can join in online at any of those times as well, all throughout the, uh, across the state of Mississippi. All right. Stick with us, though. we got more with the boys from Pine Lake coming up next. 